Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Heavy Yields, your go-to channel for everything finance and fitness, where we dive deep into the world of finance and make it understandable and accessible for everyone. I'm Lockie McLeish. Thank you for watching my video today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification uh, bell so you never miss a video and for our regular viewers, welcome back. Now, before I give a bit of a preview of what's to come, I'd like to discuss the fact that I've had a bit of a change of heart uh, regarding the direction of the channel and, and how I see it growing. Um, personally, you know, I've, I've really, really enjoyed learning and, and chatting more about the financial concepts and financial basics that we have in these first sort of two months um, of, of heavy yields. And I feel like there is, or I feel like I have a much greater drive to sort of continue down that path and, and continue not only increasing my own understanding, but trying to educate all of you guys as well. So that being said, um, you know, for, the foreseeable future, at least the main focus of this channel will be on finance. Um, you know, I will still try and sprinkle in a few, you know, fitness mindset sort of lifestyle tips in there as well. So um, it's not all just me talking numbers and talking shop, but for the most part, it is it is going to be about finance. Um, it's something that I've sort of really loved doing, as I said, and I feel like I have a lot to offer there. So hopefully all of you can uh, continue sticking around and, and watching the videos and sharing them to your friends, family, significant others, whoever else, um, you know, as we continue along this journey to help each other learn more together. So having said that, uh, today, we're going to be taking a closer look at stocks and stock risks. You know, in the last sort of few videos, we covered bonds, bond risks, stocks, stock risks. Um, so if you haven't watched those, go back and watch them so you can un easily understand and follow along some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so more specifically today, we're going to be unpacking the different types of stocks and the risks associated with them, some of the risks associated with them. Um, you know, whether you are in college, you're a high schooler, or you're just a young adult or, or an adult in general trying to increase your financial understanding, then this channel and this video is the place for you. Before we dive in, as always, everything covered in this video is for edu educational purposes only and should not be considered as financial advice. For financial advice, please consult an investment or a finance professional. All right, guys, thank you for this little bit longer than usual intro. Let's get stuck in. All right, let's start with a quick refresher. What is a stock? I hope you guys remember. But if not, here's the answer. Simply put, a stock represents ownership in a company. When you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of that company. You become a shareholder and you have a claim on the company's assets and earnings. But not all stocks are created equal. There are different types of stocks out there and it's essential to understand these differences if you want to succeed in the stock market. First off, let's start with growth stocks. These are the stocks of companies that are expected to grow at an above average rate compared to other companies in the market. They're exciting, they're dynamic, and they often don't pay dividends because they reinvest all of their profits back into the company to fuel further growth. Examples of growth stocks are companies like Tesla, and Amazon, think of those that are just growing rapidly and have seen a significant increase in their share price over recent years. Then we have value stocks. These are shares in companies that are considered undervalued compared to their intrinsic worth. They're like the hidden gems of the stock market. Now, typically investors buy these stocks in the hope that the market will eventually 
realize their true value and the stock will reprice, meaning it will increase, hopefully it will increase upwards. Um, companies in this category often have lower price to earnings ratios than others, and some of them may pay dividends. You know, a good example of a value stock is something like Berkshire Hathaway, uh, which is Warren Buffett's company. All right, just quickly before I move on, there was a term in there that I haven't used before and we haven't touched on before. And if you were listening and have been following along to my other videos, it was a price to earnings ratio or a PE ratio. Now, a PE ratio is a valuation ratio of a company's current share price compared to its earnings per share or EPS for short. It's a popular ratio used by investors to gauge if a company's stock price is valued appropriately. So here's how to think about it. If a company has a PE ratio, a price to earnings ratio of 20, that means investors are willing to pay 20 times the earnings for that company's stock. It's like saying for every $1 the, comp the company earns in profit, investors are willing to pay $20 to own a piece of that profit. PE ratios can help you compare the relative value of companies in the same industry. And now a high PE ratio might mean that a stock's price is high relative to earnings and possibly overvalued, but not always. And conversely, a low PE might indicate that the current stock price is low relative to earnings and possibly undervalued. However, it's very important to remember that a PE ratio or a company's PE ratio is just one tool among many used by investors to value and assess companies. It doesn't tell you the whole story about the stock's value and it should be used along with other financial metrics and information when making investment decisions. Lastly, we have dividend stocks. These are shares in companies that regularly pay dividends to their shareholders. They may not offer massive growth potential, but they provide a steady income stream, which can be especially attractive to certain investors. You know, think of people who are closer to the end of their investment lifetime or are just looking for a more secure uh, stream of income. Companies like Coca-Cola and Procter and Procter and Gamble, excuse me, are renowned for being really good dividend payers and are really good dividend stocks if that's what you're interested in. But remember, with great potential reward comes great potential risk. Every type of stock carries its own set of risks, and that's something we can never forget in the world of finance and investing. Growth stocks, for instance, are susceptible to market volatility and high valuation risk. Now, high valuation risk refers to the danger that a company's stock price, which may be influenced due to optimistic growth expectations, could plummet if those expectations are not met. Essentially, if the company's growth doesn't live up to the hype, the stock price can come crashing down which can and certainly has ruined a lot of investors over the years. Value stocks, on the other hand, carry the risk of remaining undervalued. There's no guarantee that the market will ever recognize their true worth, plus they often face business or financial risks that have led to their undervalued status in the first place. So if you buy a stock that you think is undervalued, but it never actually reprices to what you think it is revalued, then you know, you're know you you're losing money essentially because you're just not getting that uptick and you're not getting that profit that you expected to get. And dividend stocks, well, while they may provide a steady income stream, they're not immune to risks either. Companies can and often do cut their dividends, which can lead to a significant drop in stock price. Additionally, they may not offer the same growth potential as other types of stocks. But don't worry, take a deep breath. It's not all doom and gloom. You know, there are ways to manage these risks. And one of them is diversification. And funnily enough, that's exactly what we're going to be covering in next week's 
video. So if you want to learn how to spread your investments to minimize risk and maximize your potential returns, make sure you tune in to next week's video. As always, thank you very much for joining me uh, on this deeper dive into stocks and stock risks. Remember, investing in the stock market is always going to involve some level of risk and it's essential to do your own research and understand what you are investing in. And as I said at the start, this video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Heavy Yields so you don't miss any more of my content. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the comment section below or in the comment section below rather and I will do my best to get back to all of them. And please, as we continue to make these videos or as I continue to make these videos, any feedback is always welcome. I'm Lockie. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for next week's episode on diversification. Have a great day. Have a great night. And I'll see you soon. Cheers, legends.